morning, and uh, welcome to the first day of talks at Unite Copenhagen. And it's my pleasure to finally give a talk on how to get started with Burst. My name is Lee Hamilton. I may be more nervous than I look. Uh, and I work on the Burst team. And it's our job to try to make your code run as fast as possible. Today, we're going to give a brief introduction to what Burst is. Then I'm going to show you how to add Burst to an existing project. Go through some of the pitfalls, show you where to get help, and give a little talk about what's coming in the future. So what is Burst? Well, Burst is a compiler. It takes .NET bytecode and turns it into native CPU code. Uh, basically, it makes things go much quicker. It works with Unity's job system, and it's part of the data-oriented technology stack, or DOTS. OK. So in order, whoop, let's get the right window. In order to do this, I found a, a nice demonstration sample that I could use uh, in order to show you how to add Burst to an existing project. This is called Factory. It's one of our training samples. And uh, essentially, it's a nice overhead view of a factory, and there are little bots that go to the purple squares, which are resources, collect them, and then take them to the green squares. So, simple enough. The first thing we probably should do is take a look at the profiler. Okay, and as you probably can't see, but there is this job, uh, this piece of code, flow field generate, which is taking on average around nine or 10 milliseconds. So it'd be great if we could somehow use burst to make that code go faster. Burst, like many Unity projects these days, is delivered as part of the package manager. So the first thing you need to do is go to the package manager, type burst with less Bs. And uh, as you can see here, I already have burst installed. This is because it's been installed as a dependency of something else in this project. It's got a check mark. That's how I know it's installed. If it wasn't installed, there'd be a button here that says install. Couldn't be simpler. The other thing I want to bring your attention to is this view documentation. Believe it or not, that will take you to Burst's documentation. I happen to be offline, so here's one I made earlier. Um, this is well worth a read. Uh, we cover some of what I'm gonna talk about in this talk. We cover what a lot of the options do, what the inspector is. Uh, we've got an entire section on standalone player support. So please do give it a read. Okay. So assuming we've added Burst, the next thing we need to do is take advantage of it. So as you, if you remember, I showed you a piece of code, flow your field generate, that was taking 10 milliseconds. Um, don't worry about being unable to grok all this code. It's not important. I'm going to give you a link to a repository that contains this sample at the end of the session. But there is, as you can see, all this code. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a job. And the template for creating a job is this. Okay, that's what a job struct looks like. The execute method is where we're gonna put our code. Like so. Now, as you can see, there's some little red underscores and that's because it needs some variables. So we should probably find those. Okay, 
there's one more we need. Okay, so all the others have gone, good. Um, so now we've moved it to a job struct. The last thing we need to do is create an instance of our job struct and tell it to execute our code. Um, fortunately, I've practiced this, so I remember what variables I need. Honest. Uh, and set. So we've created an instance of that job. And to make that job execute our code, we can just do run. Run is special. Run will just execute this code there and then on the main thread. Really, we're using the job system here just as a way to turn on burst compilation. So let's just check that nothing's gone horribly wrong. Can anyone see my code? Oop. Oh. Did I have an error? Let's have a look. <laughs> no? They said not to do this live. I don't know why, honestly. Ah, there we go. So, as you can see, stop. As you can see, it's still there. It's still taking roughly the same amount of time. We've not really made any difference. Um, wait a minute. This talk was about burst, right? We should probably turn burst on. So how do we do that? Ah, well, that's the best bit. So all you need to do to turn burst on is that. Oh, not that. I may be a Vim user. Right, let's try that again. Well, don't fail me now. Aha, I think we have a result. Whether I can find the result is another matter. Right, so before it was taking on average nine milliseconds. It's now taking 0.4 milliseconds. Um, and that's really not bad for adding a single attribute to a struct. Okay. Let's, let's, let's get back to the slides where they're less likely to go wrong. Um, so, as a recap, you need to add the burst package to your project. Um, again, these slides will be available after the talk, so you don't need to worry about necessarily consuming all the information on them. You need to move your code to the job system. If there's no job system, there's no burst. Uh, but we're only using the job system here as a container to allow us to use burst. We're not taking any advantage of the job system's ability to run your code in parallel, schedule tasks, and chain dependencies. Um, the job system documentation is, again, very thorough. I suggest you look at that if you're interested in going wide with your jobs. This is the standard boilerplate um, for your job. You Stick the data you need at the top, you stick the code you want to run in the execute method, and you initialize the job and run it. And burst compile, stick the attribute at the top. 
So how does this work? Well, there's kind of two ways. So in the editor, we use what's called just-in-time compilation. Essentially, when Mono reaches the run or schedule of your job, Burst will start compiling that code into native assembler in the background. While this is happening, Mono is running your version of the, or you're running the Mono version of the code. So this is important to realize if you're looking for deterministic or you're looking to profile your results. Um, in, if that's the case, you can use the synchronous attribute and that will cause Burst to stop the code executing while it compiles the code and then run. And you will never run the mono version of the code in this case. The other way of, uh, that Burst works is ahead of time compilation. And this is basically what happens when you build a player. At the point that the assemblies have been compiled for your C-sharp, Burst will, at that point, build a native library. This will be shipped with your player. And this works the same way whether your player is built using Mono or IL to CPP. Few additional notes on AOT. Burst requires native toolchains in order to build your native libraries. This is why you cannot compile Windows on a Mac or Mac on a Windows desktop when using Burst. Currently, do note I say currently. Most platforms will build a shared library. It will be called something along the lines of lib underscore burst underscore generated. There are exceptions to every rule. iOS, for instance, is statically linked. This means that we build a static library and we add a small C++ file to your project which links the two together. The burst compile attribute is not just how you enable Burst, it's also how you communicate with Burst. And to that end, we have a floating point mode. This defaults to strict. Strict basically means it doesn't try to reorder your floating point operations. There is deterministic, which adds an extra layer of don't reorder things, don't change things to the process. And finally, there is fast, which I'll talk about a little later. Then there is float point precision. This is a slider, if you like. It just determines how accurate your sine, cosine, and other calculations are. This works with Unity Mathematics only. Now, I did not use Unity Mathematics for the purposes of this demo because I didn't want to add more changes to the code than I needed. Um, if you're interested in Unity Mathematics, there is a talk by Dale at 4 p.m. today called An Introduction to Mathematics. Go give it a look. Uh, and finally, compile synchronously, which I've already mentioned. OK, it's time for a confession. Um, what I showed in that demo isn't quite the whole story. Burst can't do everything. For instance, it's unaware of and, and cannot compile reference or manage types. This includes classes, strings, C-sharp arrays, and so on. This also means it can't work with standard mono behaviors. It can't write to static variables. There's no try-catch support. All of this is covered in more detail in the documentation. So, this is a link to the repository for the demo I just showed. In that repository, you will see a series of commits. These are the commits that I needed to make in order to do the demonstration that I did based on the rules of what Burst does not support. So some of the changes are things like I added profile markers. Then I had to convert C-sharp arrays to native arrays. All of the native containers are Burst compatible. Um, the map is a class. The map is used for the representation of the factory and it's shared by a number of mono behaviors. So it needed to remain a class. So I'll get to how I solved that shortly. Lists were converted to native lists. And finally, there was a lookup table that needed a small tweak. So first up, dealing with the arrays. 
Native arrays are one-dimensional. So one of the first changes you'll see is I had to turn all the two-dimensional arrays into one-dimensional arrays. Um, this is really simple. I mean, it's, it's what the compiler does for you anyway when you're using a two-dimensional array. But there's a literal sample of the transformation you would have to make. Again, the slides will be available later. After this, I then converted all these C-sharp arrays to native arrays. There are a couple of things to bear in mind with native containers. You are responsible for the memory. You must free memory if you're done with it. There are different types of allocators. In this particular case, I converted everything to persistent because I wanted it to live on longer than a frame, for instance, longer than a temporary allocation. And this meant I also had to add an on-destroy method to dispose of all this memory I had allocated in native arrays. I mentioned the map class. Well, the map class, it turns out, ends up with all value types for its data, especially after I've converted it to native arrays. Because of this, I can simply wrap all of the data in the map class into an internal struct, and then when I need to use a struct in my job, I can reference that struct. Lists to native lists is pretty much the same rules as native arrays. Gotchas are native containers use length for the count, not count, and a native list doesn't necessarily support all of the methods of a list. I mentioned a lookup table. So here you can see move directions, and it's, it's literally used as a lookup table. To make this burst compatible, I had to add static read-only tags. Hang on a second. I said that C-sharp arrays are not supported. There's exceptions to every rule. This is a special case. It's only supported in this one case you can see here, which is when you have a constant table. It's important to note, read-only here is, read is applying to move directions, not the contents. This is a C-sharp thing. If you change the contents of this array, Burst will not see those changes. Burst, on the other hand, will error if you try to change the contents of this array within Burst compiled code. Final word on containers. There are temporary allocators for containers. If you're using a job, make sure to use the allocator temp job. If you don't, you'll get some warnings in the Unity output. And native containers do not have reference indexes. So the code here with an X next to it, this line, open set zero is returning a temporary value, not a reference to that slot. So here we're trying to change this temporary value and we can't do that. And the compiler will tell us we can't do that. The workaround, if you like, is to use this slightly longer, more verbose, assign it to a temporary, change the value, assign it back. Yes, it's more typing, but it's the same generated code in the end. Burst is fully aware of what you actually mean here. Okay, I've given you the bad news. So what's the good news? Well, Burst supports all the value types. You can use it with ECS, which I'm sure you will be hearing a lot about this week. You can use it with generic types. And it does improve your performance. Well, not your performance, um, to be clear. <laughs> it improves the performance of your code. OK. I mentioned float mode fast. You can use this to speed up your compiled code. You, know, you get another benefit on top of burst. This does sacrifice accuracy. It, it essentially allows the compiler to reorder your floating point calculations and potentially combine them into things like multiply add. The thing to note here is the precision of these instructions on a CPU may not be the same as doing the operations individually, which is why we say it sacrifices accuracy. Um, and the other note is the burst inspector, which I'll show you shortly, um, it defaults to showing what your code looks like as if you've had the fast attribute applied to it. 
So keep this in mind. I said it didn't support try and catch, but it does support throwing exceptions. Don't do this outside of the editor. It'll, it'll be a bad time. Um, the accession messages will come out in the console and your code will, uh, your job will stop executing at that point. Um, but your code will continue to execute, so what you'll probably find is you get even more errors in your console. Yeah, it's, it's not great, it's, but it can help in an emergency. Okay, I've given you the, the, the long and short of the compatibility here. I want to show you another way that um, you can utilize Burst without necessarily having to convert lots of your code over. So let's hopefully run this again. Okay. This time, I'm gonna spawn in some bots. I'm gonna spawn in a thousand bots. I know it's a thousand bots because there's a number limiter on one of the objects in this project, and I set it to a thousand. So there's a thousand bots. So now let's look at the profiler. Okay. So now there's this new thing, bot manager update. I mean, this is a demonstration of why it's important to profile what you actually expect your users to be doing. And in this case, there is a couple of different parts to it, but the important, the important one and the one I want to concentrate on is this transform, which is currently taking four milliseconds. So maybe we can do something about that. Here is that transform. And on the right, lots of code. We're not worried about the code. Um, you can see it takes a list. Okay, well, we can't have a list. That's not a native container. Burst does not support lists. Um, but worse, it takes a factory bot. It's a list of factory bots. And factory bots contain classes. So this is going to be a bit of work to port it over. Perhaps there's a better way. What about this? What if I make a temporary array? Make a struct that only contains the bits, that the, the variables that the transform needs. And then I copy my values across, and then I run the transform operation, and then I copy the results back, and then dispose of our temporary memory. I mean, if I did that, this would be a struct, and I could use burst. But I'm doing more work, so that's nuts, right? Well, maybe. Maybe. So the first thing we need is we need a struct that can hold the values that transform needs. And I know that this is a position, a radius, and a hit count. We will need a job. We now are familiar with what jobs look like. Uh, in this case, the job will need a map, and it will need an array of bot values. Um, you'll see the highlighted line there, that's just because we now need to change this to be a native array of bot values, okay? And then the final thing we want to do is we want to replace this transform with what we were just talking about, which is this code. So here, we allocate a native array of our bot values. This is a temp job allocation. We then copy the values we need for the transform function to work. So for all of the bots, copy position, the radius, and the hit count. Then we run our job. Then we copy our values back. And then we dispose of our temporary allocation. So this was four milliseconds for the transform job before. So let's stick a thousand bots back in. Let's look at the profiler. 
And if I can find the transform job, here we go. So the transform that we're measuring is now 0.3 milliseconds from four milliseconds. The burst part of this is 0.15 milliseconds. So it takes half the time of the operation and the copies are the other half. Now, we're doing more work in less time. And I really want you to remember this. This is e by far the easiest way of getting this performance boost. Okay, what happens when things go wrong? Well, you've, you've seen. Um, first thing to make sure is you have burst compile enabled in the editor. If you're on a standalone player and you think burst is not being used, well, in that case, make sure you don't tick disable burst. Um, yes, I'm fully aware that there's two options that mean the same thing that are inverted. I'll fix it when I'm not dealing with a Unite talk. <laughs> I mentioned the burst inspector. This is, this is a great tool. So, down the left-hand side, you can see a list of all your jobs. Any jobs that are grayed mean that burst is not compiling them. Perhaps you forgot to put the burst compile attribute on the job. On the right, burst will show you what the CPU code looks like. And if you enable enhanced dis disassembly, you can even see the C-sharp intermixed between this. Get familiar with this tool. There's going to be a talk by Andreas on Thursday at 1 p.m. about intrinsics and getting the most out of vectorization. I strongly recommend, if you're interested in that, you go and see that talk. What happens if your player build crashes? You're going to get this stack trace that you can see. Um, if it crashed within burst, the likelihood is you're going to see this name in red, libburst generated. Unless it just so happens that you're dealing with a statically linked burst, in which case it'll probably say Unity Player. But the important part is this orange string hash. Make a copy of it. Now, I told you before, it will generate, burst will generate a native library libburst generated, probably .dll or .so. Next to that, burst will also put a libburst generated .text. Open this file up and search for that hash you copied earlier. You'll find it on the end of a very long line of text. The important part is if you scan back through that text looking for the execute, you will see the name of your job and the namespace of your job here in green. This allows you to at least identify which job is causing you the problem. At that point, for now, you can turn off burst compilation and perhaps debug whatever the issue is. Normally, if burst fails to compile your code, you'll get an error message in the console and it'll point you at the line and it'll try and give you a helpful message like, I don't support classes and you're trying to use a class. If you get an error in a standalone player, burst rather unhelpfully will just report burst compiler failed running. Click on the error. More detail will be available in the window below. And in this particular case, it's telling me that the Android NDK is not available. Now I happen to know this because I deleted it just before running in order to produce this error. As I said before, and showed before, we have a manual, read it. Lots of help in there. If that's not enough, please post issues on the DOTS forum. Do start new issues, though, and put burst in the title. This way, we can find them. If you post on a completely unrelated topic, we're less likely to find the problem. And you can report bugs via the Unity bug reporter. This works just the same for Burst. Coming soon, 
in 2019.3, or Burst version 1.2, we've upgraded the LLVM backend. Now, the LLVM backend is, is the workhorse of Burst. Alexander did a talk at last year's Unite on how the Burst compiler works. If you're interested in that, I suggest you watch that talk. We fix lots of bugs. We do occasionally do work rather than write talks. Um, you can now use Burst with the entity command buffer. We've also made compilation times faster. We now have caches. The caches are reliable. And we now thread uh, or run multiple threads of compilation. So your startup times, the very first instance, should be quicker. And you can test these features out in Preview 5, which came out yesterday. Uh, so a quick view on the roadmap. Um, this isn't in any order or any priority. Um, there's some more work to do on determinism. Uh, we want to add runtime support of toggling deterministic versus non-deterministic jobs. We're going to improve the debugging story. It's going to take some time. But we're fairly confident we can get you the ability to log messages from inside a burst compiled job back to the Unity console sooner rather than later. We're going to continue to improve the performance of your code and how long it takes to get you those results. And we're going to look at cross-compilation. We have a plan that will at least fix cross-compilation for desktop platforms so that you will not require the native tool chains to be installed in order to build a player. I'll give you some more details on this when we're ready. And there will be support for any additional platforms that may or may not exist. So in summary, and I apologize, because I added this slide at the last minute, and it's not quite right. Um, <laughs> Burst is basically free performance. Yeah? If you've done all the work to get it into a job, getting it into Burst is the 1%. And the copy Burst copy paradigm is your friend. I'd like to thank you um, and invite you to bring up any questions. This is a link to the repository. It's live now. I was going to say there's microphones out the front. Where have they gone? <laughs> oh, OK. No questions, wow. Oh no, there we go, at the back. Hi, thanks for the talk. You're welcome. Um, so when we were doing some work with the job system, one of our biggest bottlenecks was that copy from like list to native array. Um, has there been any work done to like expedite that process? I know there's been some stuff posted in the forums about how to essentially do a unsafe copies and those sort of things. Do you know anything about that? Um, so here's, here's my embarrassing admittance. Um, I'm not a C-sharp programmer. <laughs> However, I know what you're referring to, and yes, that would work uh, certainly for C-sharp arrays to native arrays, for instance. For okay. lists, it's a little trickier, I think. Gotcha. Yeah, the, the main one is the, is the arrays. But you can still do lists because you can get access to the, the backing array in C-sharp if you're doing what is usually considered bad things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do you know if any support like that's going to be built into Unity APIs or, or some utility functions for us to use? Because we were like creating meshes with tens of thousands of vertices, and that's a, quite a large copy. Can you post this up on the forums? I shall, um, yes. I, I, I think you'll get a much better answer than what I can give you right now. OK, perfect, thanks. No problem. OK, this side. Uh, if you've already optimized some of your code using native code, can you just call native externs from the like, burst compiled jobs? And is there any performance issues with doing that? Can you call? Uh, yes, I think you can. And uh, no, there shouldn't be any performance concerns. Um, yeah. 
I'm, I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> this side. I was so a lot of the code that I was trying to convert to burst. Uh, does heavy usage of vector math and stuff. So I'm using a ton of debug lines and things. And currently, this is basically what's stopping me from using Burst for everything, because I haven't found a way to properly draw stuff from there. OK. Well, you can actually use this copy Burst copy paradigm here, but kind of in the reverse. So if you create a native list, and you put your line information in the job into that list, at the end, you can take that list of lines and you can render them on the main thread just using debug line. And it'll work fine. Can I like compile that out if I don't need it anymore? Like, Is there an, a compiler flag for this is compiled with burst or this is compiled in the player so I get rid no, of this? No, the closest we have at the moment is we have the concept of um, uh, we have the concept of something I can't remember the name of. Um, discard, thank you. Ah, where were you five minutes ago? Uh, yes, burst discard. You can use this attribute and it will effectively throw, your, throw that code block away. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yes, uh, my question is that I saw uh, some boilerplate code here and there, and if you want to avoid duplicating that, do you support things like C-sharp extension methods? Yes. <laughs> Go. Okay. So you mentioned ahead of time compilation. So does it mean that it works on mobile, right? Yes. OK, thank you. Yep. And if things go wrong on mobile? Should... Um, you still you... get a player log, right, when it crashes. You can, yeah. still, you can still use that same method I showed in the slides okay. to find out which job went wrong. OK, cool. Thank you. And so I think you've mentioned it before, but um, should I use ILG CPP to uh, elaborate Burst, or can I use Mono backend? You can use either backend. All right. It, does, it doesn't. It burst Burst is completely separate to that decision. All right. Thanks. Okay. Uh, um, if you use, if you're using the new uh, NCs dot for each uh, with the uh, just putting the job code inside the parentheses that they showed up in the keynote yesterday. Does yeah. that code burst compile? Yes. I'm liking these one word answers. It's much easier on me. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess that's it. Um, if you have questions you think about later, uh, you might spot me. I'm the only person foolish enough to work, wear open sandals and shorts <laughs> in this weather. Uh, thank you, you've been awesome. Thank you.